Hi gamers, this is Luru, and today we will do a quickie guide to one of my favorite and undeniably the cutest hero in game. We will learn some awesome tips and tricks as well as the best ways on how to use this wise owl effectively. Also, do not forget to button mash like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So let us get on with this guide and learn how to use the wisest owl in game but talks like this. Harry Potter's owl, you cannot fool us. Well that could be error with a post. Oh, fetch it really Percy, please. Here we are with Diggy's Quickie Guide. Here's my item build but please take note that this is fully adjustable according to your enemies lineup and as for my emblem, I went for support emblem with move speed, hybrid region along with focusing mark. Diggy is an awesome support and for laning, he is great for either a 1-2-2 or 1-3-1 lineup. But before we continue, I have a quickie question for you all. Where do you think mid laners usually go after clearing the first wave? And you've probably guessed it right. They would usually go to secure their blue buff first. Given that, here's my first pro trick for Diggy. And that is to stock up some Diggy bombs in enemy's blue buff. If you move over there as soon as the game started, you should be able to stock up to 4 bombs after the mid wave's been cleared which is usually enough to kill an enemy core. But if you will be going with this pro trick, I would suggest that you coordinate with your mid laners to poke and deal damage on the enemy as much as possible for the bombs to finish off the bob. Just like this, easy first blood. But you have to be really careful not to be seen when executing this trick. If somehow you have been spotted, I highly suggest that you bail out quickly because you could die really easily. But in the situation that you succeeds just like this, it is a great opportunity for the team to invade the enemy's blue buff, which gets to my second tip, which is by utilizing the bombs to zone the enemies out by scattering it to the enemy's passable entry point. For this particular game, we will be doing a 1-2-2 laning and I will be sticking with our MM Hanabi for me to babysit. But for now, let's talk about Diggy's skill starting with his first and we will call it let's call it diggy bomb okay yeah that sounds just about right diggy bomb you can place it on a sp specified area and for any enemies including minions or neutrals that gets close to it would be chased down by the bombs eventually exploding dealing magic damage in fact this actually has a pretty decent damage of up to 800 at max level and it would slow enemies down by 30 percent the bomb can be stacked up to 3 times, but if the bomb doesn't detect any enemies within 30 seconds, it would disappear. Diggy Bomb has a lot of use. It can be used for vision, poking, and of course, zoning enemies out. Which gets me to my next tip. Place the bombs in bushes where it won't reach the minion wave or neutrals, so it would stay there to give you the vision that the team needs. Also, be very attentive and listen carefully because if the bomb were to chase an enemy down and explodes, you should be able to hear it, giving you an idea where the enemies are and avoid unfavorable situations. Do not be afraid to spam the skill because it doesn't really eat up too much mana, especially when you have high enough support emblem, the hybrid region should be enough to sustain you, allowing you to spam the skills tactically. Just secure the perimeter and keep pressuring your enemy so that your carry could farm in peace. At this point of time in the game, I already have the first form of roaming mask and warrior boots to give me the extra physical defense I need to survive. And my next item would be Dominant's Ice for me to get extra beefy because in this game, most enemies deal physical damage. But mostly, Dominance Ice can slow enemies' attack and move speed for that extra debuff. 
most people would opt in to get fleeting time as their first item because Diggy's ulti is very important but have high cooldown. But just a quickie FYI, the cooldown for Diggy's ulti, regardless of level, is 60 seconds across the board. But I believe that at early game, you won't have to use the ulti again within the next 60 seconds after you've just used it. So I would really advise against getting fleeting time as the first main core item because as mentioned, Dig is a very squishy hero but he is required to be in the center of the clash to protect his allies. This is actually a very good sample. In this clash, I will have to protect my allies from Akai's ulti but I don't believe that there would be any more clashes like this within the next 60 seconds that would require me to use my ulti again. Given that, I really suggest that you go for defense item first to get the extra defense Diggy needs. This is so you could avoid early feeding and for you to last long enough in the clash to protect your allies with your ulti. For now, let's get back to Diggy's skills and we will be discussing about his second skill which we will call Shackled Like a Dog. So yeah, Shackled Like a Dog is Diggy's main CC skill that is very good at locking enemy heroes down. It can target a single enemy to be shackled like a dog and within 4 seconds, that shackled dog would be pulled back to the center of the skill and would be dealt weak magic damage, but be slowed down by 80%. Diggy Bomb is a very good combo for this. You can place the bomb at the center of the shackle so when the enemy gets pulled back in, they would be bombed. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, but in the situation that the dog tries to escape the shackle's range, they would be pulled back immediately. And you have to take note that CC immune heroes like, say, Cho or Grok, because they could escape safely without being pulled back. So here's my next pro tip when using his second skill, Shackled Like Dog. I highly suggest that you utilize Hero Lock to make sure that you shackle the enemies, Prio Hero, or those agile enemies that you have to burst right away. If an enemy were to use their dash skill while being shackled, it would just be wasted and may mean instant death for the dog, because they don't have any dash skills anymore when they've been pulled back. And just remember that shackled enemies could still move and use their skills, so it isn't a total stun, but instead it is more on keeping the enemy in one place. For an item update, I have just purchased the Karch Mask. This would greatly boost our teamfight potential because it greatly enhances the team's basic stats like say the attack and defense, and when the active skill is used, it would further enhance the attack, defense, and move speed by a lot to nearby allies for 3 seconds. Again, as a support, this allows you to help your allies win more clashes in early game. Moving on to Diggy's last skill, which will be named as Fat You Akai. With this skill, most Akai players or any other heroes that heavily relies on CC skills are basically fat. So fat to you Atlas, fat you Ruby, fat you Minotaur, fat you tank heroes, and as a tank main myself, fat me. It has a huge AoE and for any allies inside the aura would be immune to any CC skills and would receive a shield for protection. But do take note that Suppress Effect isn't affected by this immunity. So the two heroes that aren't fat of this ulti are Kaja and Franco. Yeah, fat you Akai. When playing as Diggy, it feels like playing endless mind games with enemy setters. Unless the enemy is mindless, so there won't be any much mind games for that. But in the case that they are very good with what they do, whoever gives in first to use their skills would most likely lose. But if we use the skills too late, then it means immediate defeat. Which gets me to my next pro tip. You have to be very patient and just make sure that you use the ulti at the perfect moment. In fact, you could use this skill while being CC'd by your enemies. So you could even wait until the last moment when the enemy already popped their ulti. 
but you have to be really careful and always gauge the situation. Another tip, as said earlier, it could also provide shield to your allies. So it could also be used to save the allies that's almost dying that doesn't need CC immunity by providing them some shield to last long enough and turn the tables around. And this is what I meant by mindless setters. Fat you, Akai. Next pro tip goes to all heroes with crucial skills important to team fights, like Diggy. And that is to be courteous enough to let your allies know if your ulti is ready or not. A good communication is needed when using Diggy. Having your ulti ready would give assurance to your allies that they could dive in without having to worry about the enemy CC too much. On the other hand, they won't initiate any clashes knowing that your ulti is not ready. When the clash is about to start, I usually go somewhere on the back line, but it's near enough to pop my ulti and cover all allies. Again, Diggy is a very squishy hero and most enemies would like to burst this poor little bird down as early as possible to remove his pesky Fatu Akai skill. With a perfect executed Fatu Akai, could protect all your allies and get a passable team wipe out. Which means there are no enemies to defend while your team is still alive and kicking to complete any objectives. And just like that, we managed to pull a wipe out on the enemy. Here is another pro trick when pushing. You may place your diggy bombs right behind the enemy turrets or you could place them in high ground if possible to a spot where it won't reach the minion wave to get vision and of course zone the enemies out. And just a fair warning, here's another Fatu Akai moment. Fatu Akai. For now, let's get back to Diggy skills and this time his passive, which shall be named the Sir Scrumbled Humpty Omelette Dumpty the 16th Egg. This must be one of the most innovative skills ever created by the devs in the game. They must have eaten a lot of happy pills when they thought of this skill. Basically, what happens is that when Diggy dies, he will turn into this rocking egg and will have a new set of skills, namely, Eat on my egg dust, Spinning egg tornado of death, and of course, Egg traditional prayer of instant destruction, which is probably the most OP skill in game that could give you a chance to get an instant victory. However, legend says that it has a 0% success rate, but we could never tell because legend at times could be wrong. But on a serious note, Sir Scrumbled Humpty Omelette Dumpty the 16th Egg can be used for your team's advantage. As you would have the ability to walk and then be invulnerable, you can provide the most important factor of war to your team, which is vision. You could follow the enemies in bushes, follow them all the way through to their turrets, and even to their fountain to get vision. And with this much vision, this could help your allies spot the enemies for a possible ambush or stay away from them for safety. Another awesome way on utilizing the passive is by positioning yourself by the time you respawn be sure to be on the spot where you're needed. This could be near your carry, or be in the middle of the clash to pop your ulti, or chase an enemy hero. Here's another pro trick for Diggy. His OP egg skills deals a very small amount of damage to your enemies, and could even interrupt recalls. So if you find an enemy that needs to recall to, the, to either region up or defend their base, you can stick to them like a gum and pester them as long as possible as they won't be able to recall and delay their objective. And as the egg skills deals damage, 
if the enemy were to die, you would receive assist count as 4 and extra gold. For my last pro trick for Sir Scrumbled Humpty Omelette Dumpty the 16th Egg which may not be known to most players that the passive of his item still works while in his egg form. This means the slow from his dominance eye still works or if you ever got the idea of using cursed helmet on him, the burn aura should still work while in egg form. So even in death, you could still assist your allies. Brace yourselves to this last Fat Q Akai moment. <laughs> Fat you Akai. So, if you have any other heroes you would like to get a quickie guide of or perhaps an in depth guide, just feel free to let me know. And what do you think of this Harry Potter's Owl? Let's talk more about him along with other gamers on the comment section below. I'm also pretty sure that I will be using this guide as a giveaway so good luck to everyone and I hope you like this guide. Also do not forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on guides like this and of course my giveaways. Again my name is Luru, game on!